In this video I'm going to use the multivariate technique of correspondence analysis to visualize dependence between two categorical variables in a contingency table. The example I'm going to look at is the hair color and eye color for 313 female students. So this contingency table shows us that for example there are 36 students with black hair and brown eyes, there's 64 students with blonde hair and blue eyes, and and so on. So in an earlier lesson we looked at the chi-squared test of independence. So that's the test where the null hypothesis is that the two categorical variables are independent and the alternative hypothesis is that the two categorical variables are not independent. The test statistic is 166.66. The p-value is very small, essentially zero. So we therefore reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis and conclude that hair color and eye color for the population represented by these female students, uh, those two variables are um, not independent. So they're dependent in some in some fashion. So it's interesting to consider in what manner these two variables are dependent. So to do that, we can dig into the calculations that underlie the chi-squared test calculation. And if we run this code, then let me actually round this. Let's type it in the right place. So these numbers are the expected counts if the two categorical variables are independent. So for example, 20 with black hair and brown eyes, um, 30 with blonde hair and blue eyes, and so on. If we if we compare that with the observed, we can we can start to see some patterns. So what's interesting here is where we have a big difference between what's expected under the null hypothesis and what we actually observe in practice. So to help us with that, we can calculate the residuals. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm just going to switch the rows and columns because I want this table of residuals that I calculate to match up with the mosaic plot that I'll construct in a second. But let's look at the residuals first. So this is uh, observed minus expected. So we can see that there are more students that we observe, 16 more students than, that we observe than would be expected under independence in the brown eye black hair category. Um, there's 34 more blue eyed blonde haired students than we'd, we would expect. Uh, there's 28 fewer brown eyed blonde haired female students and so on. So what we're looking for here is the, the residuals with larger magnitudes and a mosaic plot will help us visualize that. The mosaic plot, actually I think the mosaic plot is just in the base library. Let's have a look, see if it gives me an error message. No, nope. mosaic plot's in the base library. Uh, so this, let's zoom in. So this is, is giving us a, a visual impression of uh, of the residuals and the the color codes here is is blue uh, where we have more observations than we would expect and then red is where we have fewer and then, and then the size of the of the rectangles is is giving an indication of uh, related to sample size uh, so the, the thing that jumps out at me here is we've got this very bright blue piece of the mosaic plot here which is representing the blue eyes and blonde hair. So we're getting more than we would expect here. Uh, this 
bright red region here tells us that we're getting fewer uh, female students with brown eyes and blonde hair. Um, but this, this bar is smaller than this one and so um, in terms of numbers this larger blue bar is, is we're talking more students here than we are here. So, so a lot of information in this mosaic plot. Um, I guess the other thing is we're getting more brown eyes, black hair combinations and we're getting fewer uh, blue eyes, black hair, um, blue eyes, brown hair and this one must be hazel eyes, blonde hair. So, and all these white ones, uh, these are where there's, there's not a huge difference between observed and expected. Another way to visualize the correspondence between the two categorical variables the different levels of the two categorical variables is to do something called a correspondence analysis. So there's a few functions available that will do this. One is this duty.coa, so it's in the ADE4 package. So I'll just load that and then let's run the correspondence analysis and then we can get a summary. So in common with the techniques, the other multivariate techniques that we've looked at in the last two videos, um, we get uh, cumulative, in this case it's calling it projected inertia. So think of this as how much of the variability in the data can be explained by uh, axes, different axes. So, so the first axis explains 88.8% uh, .8 of the variation. Uh, the next one explains 9.6% of the variation. Together we're getting 98% of the variation explained by the first two axes. So um, as, uh, as is the case with the other multivariate techniques that we looked at in the last couple of videos, so principal components analysis and multidimensional scaling, we are trying to um, reduce the dimensionality of the of the data into a into a smaller number of dimensions so we can visualize what's going on a little more easily so same kind of thing that's going on here if we just use two axes here then we can explain most of the variation in the data without losing too much information and so because it's easier to represent um, information using two dimensions because we can do that on a, just a flat surface, uh, that's 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 a good result in this case. If this number here was a lot lower, um, it would be harder to uh, represent all the variability in the data on a on a single flat surface. So because we we it does look like two dimensions is is working well here, we can visualize what's going on using a biplot. So to draw this biplot I'm pretty sure I'm going to need ggplot2. Okay so where are we? We're here and let's draw the biplot. Oh, could not find that function. Okay, it must be in a different library. Which one is it in? Huh, I don't know. Um, so, let's have a look. Let me look up fviz ca plot. See if I can find where it is. Okay. Oh, it's in Facto Extra. Okay, so I'll load that and then try it again. So whenever 
this happens to you in practice because it'll happen <laughs> um, the way to resolve this this kind of error here where, where it's saying it can't find a function is just search for it over here and the search results will will tell you which which library uh, or which package that function is in and then you just need to go and uh, install it if you haven't already installed it or, or load it if uh, you've got it installed but you haven't actually loaded it. So now hopefully I'll be able to draw this and it won't give me an error message. Okay good, <laughs> okay. And let's zoom in so we can see what's going on. So uh, this, this is a, a plot of the first two axes of the correspondence analysis and we've got the first axis on the horizontal axis, second axis on the vertical axis. It tells us what proportion of the variability can be explained by each axis. And then what it's doing is it's plotting the four levels of the uh, hair color variable and the four levels of the eye color categorical variable and it's putting them together on the same map so it's it's kind of neat this because we can then identify which levels of each categorical variable kind of go together so uh, here's blonde hair and blue eyes over here so these two are obviously kind of corresponding to one another they're quite close to one in each other on this on this plot uh, we've also got uh, red hair and hazel eyes going together. So there's, there's a tendency for, uh, in this sample of female students, for those with, with red hair to also tend to have hazel eyes and vice versa. Uh, what else have we got? We've got black hair and brown eyes going together up here. And then what's left. So this is brown hair and this is green eyes. They're not super close so I wouldn't necessarily say they're going together um, but uh, maybe we should consider them separately. Let's think about green eyes first. So green eyes in terms of hair color is relatively close to red hair and brown hair but it's pretty far away from blonde hair and black hair. So that might be the way to talk about green eyes. And then brown hair. Brown hair in terms of closeness to eye color, it's, uh, well, there's green eyes, hazel eyes, and brown eyes that it's all about the same distance from. Uh, long way from blue eyes though. So. So there we go. Uh, let me just quickly show you the output for a different uh, function that was written to implement this technique. So this is in the, the vegan library, which is nothing to do with vegans in terms of uh, food preferences. Okay, so let's give this a go. And so we can, again, get the same kind of plot here. And we get, we're getting the same kind of results. Um, the axes are switched around. The, so, so blue eyes and blonde hair was on the left in the other, in the other graph. And, and then these other categories were on the right. But it's, it's telling the same story. Blue eyes and blonde hair go together. Uh, hazel eyes and red hair, um, brown eyes and black hair, uh, and then green eyes kind of close to red hair and brown hair, far away from blonde hair and black hair, and then brown hair somewhat close to brown eyes and hazel eyes and green eyes, but a long way from blue eyes. So we're getting the same story. This extra bit of code that I have here is just building up the plot and having a little more control over how the uh, how the axes are scaled and uh, the size of the labels. But uh, 
it's the same plot. So uh, that's a, a brief introduction into correspondence analysis, which uh, one use of correspondence analysis is to uh, represent visually two categorical variables in a contingency table. And that, uh, that brings us to the end of this entire series of videos for uh, this uh, biostatistics course.